Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I have some comments on Equifax and their current ongoing fiasco. Now I'm going to try to keep this reasonably under control uh, but if the past seven takes of this have uh, told me anything I'm likely to get off on a tangent or 12. I'll try to keep that under control. So for those of you who uh, live under a rock in a cave or something like that, uh, Equifax is a credit bureau, which basically means they collect financial information and personal information on pretty much everybody in their area of operation. They get this information from banks and utility companies and whoever reports to them the various information. They then collate it into uh, files for each individual uh, person by some uh, based on identifying information, uh, which they do occasionally screw up. And then they sell this information to lenders, potential lenders, who want to know if, they're, uh, if the person asking for the money is a good risk or a bad risk or uh, average. Uh, and they use this information to make decisions about what kind of interest rates to offer, whether to offer a loan or not, what kind of a credit limit to offer, that sort of thing. So uh, this information uh, certainly makes the lenders' lives easier. Uh, they don't have to uh, do a lot of legwork to, to make a credit decision uh, these days. Uh, and this, can be, this is often sold to the consumers who question it as uh, making their lives easier as well because now they can get loans more easily. Obviously, that's a bill of goods because if you have bad credit, it's going to be even harder to get a loan. That's not necessarily a bad thing, by the way. And uh, if you have average credit, it's not going to really make life any easier or necessarily any harder. So uh, basically, the credit bureau is a central clearinghouse of sensitive personal information particularly financial information. And that is why this Equifax data breach is such a big deal. Uh, and the fact that they basically let out hundreds of millions of files uh, on, very, on consumers, that's pretty worrying. Uh, now they, I don't think the actual number they've, that's been listed is that is more is is in the hundreds of millions, but it was, but it's high enough that you can pretty much assume that every credit file they have has been compromised. Whether they think it has or not, it almost certainly has been. And since they almost certainly have a file on every adult in the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, and anywhere else they operate, Hundreds of millions is not that much of a stretch to uh, assert that. So uh, basically, they've let out personal financial and financial information on pretty much everybody. And this is bad. Now, that would be a, uh, a fiasco all on its own, right? But they've made this worse by, with their response to it. They've uh, responded with uh, uh, basically spin control. Uh, they, you know, attempts to spin the, uh, the, the reports. It's, they delayed a long time reporting the fact that the breach even happened. They uh, have tried blaming more than one uh, uh, different uh, organization or individual for for the screw up, uh, and most of the, and, and none of this stuff is sticking because uh, people are going well. You guys are idiots, uh, like the people that have any clue. And this has likely impacted uh, high level politicians and so on. So. There's going to be a lot of uh, hard questions asked. Now, unfortunately, nobody is going to see prison time for this in all likelihood. 
even though I think there's enough, uh, there, there's enough information out there to uh, to give a reasonable conclusion of gross negligence or incompetence on the part of the at least management of Equifax. Uh, so this whole thing, uh, at the very least, I think is going to lead to tougher regulations on the credit bureaus. Uh, substantially tougher, I suspect, uh, because the optics of this are really, really, really bad. Uh, now, uh, this is made even worse by the fact that it's come out that the CEO of Equifax really wasn't qualified to run anything, um, which le leads you to question the board of directors uh, as well. Uh, and and one of the people they they tried to blame was uh, a security company they hired to uh, do an audit. And instead of taking the uh, results of the uh, audit, they argued with it. And it's basically come out that the auditors were right. So uh, it, it really comes down that uh, it's... Well, Equifax has been incompetent in the aftermath, and they were incompetent before it happened. And different types of incompetence, but it's clear they cannot be trusted with information. Uh, now, I will admit that there are circumstances where information might be breached, where it's not necessarily the fault of the people who were uh, supposed to be safeguarding it. But this does not seem to be one of those cases. Uh, so, uh, in fact, it seems like the people that actually broke in were shocked at how, easy, how much and how easy uh, it was to get the data. Uh, so, uh, like really, uh, that, it, that tells you something, right? Uh, assuming that that report is accurate, uh, that the people getting the data were kind of surprised by it, by how much of it was available and how easily, and how long they were able to, uh, uh, you know, the fiddle around in there, uh, draining the data out, uh, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, the real question out of all of this, the one that we should be asking, though, is do we even need credit bureaus? Should this, these repositories of information even be there to be at risk? And I think the answer to that is no, we do not need credit bureaus. Now here's my reasoning. Before credit bureaus existed, people still got loans and uh, all of that stuff. Loans and so on still happened. It just meant that the lender had to do more work on their due diligence. They had to do more investigation to determine if the person was a risk or not. And that actually had some benefits as well as drawbacks. Now, sure, it cost more time and effort, but it also meant that there would be a more personalized decision made by the lender, who, by whoever was in charge of making the decision. Uh, it, it, it didn't necessarily boil down to a single number on a single report from some, uh, some third party, mysterious third party. So uh, credit was not non-existent before credit bureaus. Uh, so we don't need them to enable credit. That's not necessary. Uh, and further, once you've established a relationship with a particular financial institution, they don't need to talk to uh, other uh, institutions or credit bureaus or whatever to decide if you're a good risk or not. They have you, that your history with them. Further, as the potential borrower, you can come along with letters of reference and so on from previous lenders. Uh, and that can also serve as, uh, you know, uh, information for making the decision. So maybe the potential borrower, say me, would have to do more work uh, to get a loan. And that's not necessarily bad. It's actually, in my opinion, too easy to get credit these days. 
Uh, that's part of the reason that things like houses and everything are have gone up so much in the past, uh, you know, decades, uh, way way more than the the rate of inflation. That's one of the reasons. Now, the uh, the other reason I think we don't need credit bureaus is they do not benefit the consumer at all. There is no benefit to me, the consumer, to have my information in a big pile of information in a central place like Equifax. Uh, sure, they spin it like I have the benefit. Oh yeah, I can see what my credit report is and all of that. Well, you know what? I wouldn't need to see what my credit report was if you didn't exist, if this central, central clearinghouse did not exist, right? Uh, so who, who actually benefits? Well, the lenders. Is, uh, the whole point, the whole reason the credit bureaus exist is so that the lenders can share information about borrowers. That's the whole reason they exist. And I may be wrong on this, but I think the first credit bureaus were set up by coalitions of lenders. And then they were set up as arm's length organizations for uh, optics purposes to make it look like it wasn't actually run by the banks and it wasn't actually that they weren't actually forming a cartel which they are by the way uh, but it uh, uh, but it really it only benefits the lenders uh, significantly any benefit uh, I as a consumer might derive from the existence of credit bureaus is pretty much wiped out by the risk that Equifax has so generously demonstrated through their incompetence. So we don't need credit bureaus. Uh, sure, it might be harder to get a loan without one, without them, but that's not necessarily a problem. And it, you're sure, the lenders might have to do some more work if, when vetting uh, loan applicants. That's not a problem in my opinion either. Um, it, sure, it opens up a few potential avenues for uh, fraud on the part of potential borrowers, but uh, it kind of closes a couple of avenues for fraud as well if you don't have the, uh, the credit bureaus. So it, it may or may not be, uh, be a wash there, but I don't think the net benefit of the credit bureaus is particularly good, uh, the, especially in light of the Equifax situation. So in my uh, not-so-humble opinion, the end result of this Equifax fiasco should be that credit bureaus are made illegal and dismantled completely. That won't happen. But it's what should happen. There is no need for credit bureaus. As a matter of fact, uh, this whole information thing, uh, everything, everybody is addicted to having information on information on information. And I think we're going to get to a point, uh, some point in the future, where, where we're maybe not that far off from it, where everybody's going to have so much information, there's going to be no information, because you won't be able to find anything. Uh, you know, that's the whole, uh, you know, big information, you know, is like uh, big finance and big pharma. Big information will be the, the new thing. That's, that's your Googles of the world, right? And people are starting to be skeptical of the likes of Google, yet Equifax and their ilk are the Googles of the 70s and 80s and 90s, right? They're the, they're the clearing houses that controlled the important information prior to the interwebs becoming the big thing before, uh, before electronic communication and computers and social media and all of that. The really critical information about you, 
uh, was your finances, because that's what allowed you to do whatever it is you wanted to do, right? And it still is the case, right? Uh, except that there's now the social media avenue and so on where uh, character assassination and so on can happen uh, quite effectively, in fact. So uh, I think, sure, getting rid of the credit bureaus won't solve every problem, right? And it certainly won't even solve all of the problems with financial information leaking, considering uh, outfits like uh, Home Depot and so on can't... Uh, can't seem to uh, prevent uh, credit card uh, information breaches and so on either. Uh, but uh, seriously, though, uh, why should we not? Why should we not take one opportunity to improve the information safety situation when it becomes obvious? just because it won't solve every potential solution or situation, right? So uh, this has been the big problem lately in getting anything done to improve anything is everybody wants a perfect all or nothing solution instead of incrementally improving it. Uh, we identify one issue with it, we can look at it and go, okay, we can improve this. So this whole Equifax situation with credit bureaus, we can very likely uh, improve it substantially by eliminating credit bureaus. Uh, which, of course, means standing up to the financial lobby. Uh, but we could eliminate credit bureaus. And that would eliminate one risk point for information disclosure. Uh, and even if we didn't, we need to pretty much hamstring the credit bureaus with uh, information security regulation to make absolutely certain they're doing their 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 level best to keep the information from getting out incorrectly. Uh, that doesn't, I you know, it wouldn't necessarily hamstring them, but uh, there needs to be severe consequences to the credit bureau if they fail in their duty to keep the sensitive information safe. Uh, that is, uh, in this case, for instance. Uh, what would be a severe enough penalty for Equifax for basically letting their entire database out? Well, uh, maybe a corporate death penalty where you actually dismantle the, the company altogether. That might be fair. Um, but at the very least, the C-level executives and the potentially the board of directors need to feel some personal liability and uh, you know for this uh, this whatever decisions led to this uh, if they were to see personal liability for their decisions for the behavior of the company then there would likely be a lot more emphasis on keeping things secure uh, instead of uh, what appears to be a general uh, blasé attitude to uh, internal security because they had this bulletproof firewall, which obviously wasn't bulletproof. Now, would that sort of thing fly? Probably not. Uh, but uh, this particular situation is severe enough that I think it could be justified that the CEO at the time and uh, maybe the, the CTO and, and maybe, uh, maybe the, the directors should be facing potential prison time for failure in their, uh, what is, uh, I guess this would probably be a fiduciary duty. Um, but you know, uh, what's also become clear is that the credit bureaus are not regulated like financial service organizations like they should be. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of loopholes here, potential loopholes, that can probably be closed. And there will likely be some, some effort to do so uh, in the, over the next uh, few years. As, uh, this sort of thing doesn't happen overnight, nor should it. 
Uh, but it definitely, the ball needs to get rolling. Anyway, uh, that's, I, you know, I guess that's pretty much all I have to say on this. So I'll, I'll uh, leave off here instead of getting on, on uh, more tangents. So uh, that's all for this time. Uh, if you liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike. It gives me some idea what you like or you dislike. I mean, go figure. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.